Welcome to Leading Ladies of Rio Rancho, brought to you by the Rio Rancho Observer. During this series, we will invite business and community leaders from Rio Rancho and its surrounding communities in Sandoval County for conversations on what they do, why they do it, and the issues they face. I'm your host, Tracy Goldeisen, editor of the Rio Rancho Observer. Welcome. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Today, we have Clemmie Garza with us, and if you don't know her, she is the owner of the McDonald's in Rio Rancho, as well as some other communities, so I just want to take a moment and say thank you for coming in and chatting with us, and welcome. Well, it's an incredible honor to to be here with you today as a leading lady. Yeah, um, so can you just take a minute or two and introduce, and introduce yourself and your background a little bit? Sure. Um, so my father, Julian Garza, opened Rio Rancho's first uh, McDonald's restaurant almost 40 years ago. Now we operate eight in Rio Rancho, Albuquerque, Bernalillo, Pewaukee, and Española. Oh, wow. And so is that then how you got involved in becoming a franchise owner is because you followed in your dad's footsteps or... Sort of. <laughs> I actually started working uh, for McDonald's in f at 43 years ago as a college student working part time. Uh, I was actually one of the closers closing the restaurant and doing the dishes. Oh, wow. Um, my original uh, intention was to become a, a trauma surgeon and make a difference. Uh, I continued working for McDonald's through my master's and as a single parent and, and a mother of a disabled child. After McDonald's was used as the global standard in all of my master's classes, I said, wait a minute, that is the career for me. <laughs> I went back, you know, in earnest uh, to become an owner operator and uh, never looked back. Oh, wow. Amazing. Um, but you're not just an owner of the restaurant in the community. You're also very active in community service and giving back. Um, one of the big things that you're known for is hosting the annual Thanksgiving dinner. So how did that come about and why is that important to you? I'm immensely proud of the history and legacy my father started over 37 years ago when he partnered with St. Felix Pantry and the community leaders to provide these annual free Thanksgiving dinners, day dinners, uh, for anyone who showed up um, to the restaurants uh, uh, in the most recent years. I mean, it was over almost $1,200. 1,200 meals um, oh, wow. in, in a day, um, in, in that day. Mm -hmm. um, my dad has always been a, a strong community advocate, uh, an avid community supporter. He's also been a change agent behind the, yeah, behind the scenes. And he's been especially passionate about education. Now, my grandmother, his mother, used to always tell him um, investments made in education are never wasted. And, and I think that constant teaching is why many of my relatives are educators and why mm -hmm. my dad and I are both so passionate about education uh, mm -hmm. as, as one of, of the causes we support. Yeah. And I mean, we met a couple of weeks ago and we kind of talked about some of that. You talked about some of the partnerships you have with the school district here, um, as well as some initiatives that McDonald's has that you, in fact, your organization was a leader in, I believe. 100 percent correct. So let me give you a little bit about the background. Um, what you're talking about is our Archways to Opportunities uh, programs that McDonald's offers uh, nationally to any eligible em employee who works 15 hours a week for 90 days. Um, with that educational program, it actually offers multiple benefits. My employees can learn English. They can learn to speak Spanish. They can actually uh, take an online accredited high school uh, and get their high school diploma paired with a career certification in one of nine career paths 
But then they can also leverage that and uh, get tuition assistance for uh, going to any Department of Education approved program uh, that allows them to work towards their degree or their trade certification. The program, since its beginning, McDonald's has actually awarded over $200 million in tuition assistance. Oh, wow. And my employees have actually received over $183,000 in tuition assistance. Oh, wow. Most of which has gone to our local New Mexico educational institutions. So I think it's been a, a win-win situation. Right. We celebrated our first New Mexico's first career online high school graduate in 2018, Esperanza Rodriguez. She became pregnant as a high school student and had to quit school. Oh. A couple of years later, she came to work for me, and when she became eligible, she enrolled in the career online high school. And just nine short months later, she was being celebrated as New Mexico's first career online high school graduate with her high school diploma and her career certification as a child care development specialist. Um, that large celebration that involved, you know, many educators, business influencers, yeah. um, helped us to leverage first of their kind partnerships with the Rio Rancho Public School District, other nearby public school districts, shelter programs. And then we were able to work with the community colleges to streamline pipelines for my employees uh, and actually uh, McDonald's employees nationwide to further their education using the Archways to Opportunity uh, tuition assistance. Oh, amazing. Yeah. yeah. My opinion has always been as an employer, it's my responsibility to help remove the barriers to help my employees achieve their educational and career dreams. I know that if I'm able to do that, I not only help them now, but I actually uh, change their futures, their family legacies, and their communities mm -hmm. by being able to, to offer these benefits and remove those barriers now. All right. And then I believe you also mentioned something. There was a reading program you did with the school district or a book program or something? Or am I misremembering that conversation? Um, well, we've actually supported the New Mexico PTS, PTA and uh, McDonald's. Uh, this is not just my effort, uh -huh. but we've, you know, participated with the uh, New Mexico Public Education uh, Department with a literacy campaign um, that seeks to get bilingual books in elementary schools all across New okay. Mexico. Very okay. exciting. That's what I was remembering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was something with reading somewhere in there that we had discussed a couple weeks ago in another conversation. So that, that's great. I've, I was always a big reader as a kid. So I think that's fantastic. Um, but then like kind of going back to some of your community service work, you also do a lot of um, autism awareness campaigns is my understanding there. In fact, at one of your locations um, during the legislative session or just before there was a letter writing campaign to um the state legislators. And then you also mentioned a hero bag campaign that was recently at one of your locations. Can you talk about that a little bit and why that's so near and dear to you? Sure. Um, before I, I transition to that, which is exciting, I also wanted to um, share with you that in addition to the literacy campaign, we actually um, have been recognizing um, teachers that have, were nominated at this year's um, New Mexico PTA conference. And uh, I was actually honored to be able to recognize one of Rio Rancho's own uh, teachers, uh, there. Oh, that's fantastic. Just recently. So it was, it was really exciting <laughs> yeah. to, to um, completely surprise her and give her some additional monies uh, to use in her classroom for all the things that she's doing. Oh, how fun and how neat. Now, to get back <laughs> to uh, our autism work and, and why it's so near and dear to my heart. First of all, I have an adult son who is on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, 25 years ago, he had an interaction, a, a traumatic interaction with law enforcement. He survived, um, but sadly, 
there's many interactions that don't end up positively. And in fact, he's still to this day, 25 years later, traumatized by the Mm. events of that night. Elevate the Spectrum is actually um, involved supporting individuals and families with autism in a bunch of different ways. Uh, the letter writing campaign, ad- mm-hmm. advocacy uh, are, are among the many things they do. They do free activities um, that my son has been able to take advantage of. But I think one of their most impactful um, and, and important works uh, that they're doing is the Eat, Elevate the Spectrum Hero mm-hmm. Bags. These bags have tools in them in that they have communication boards, um, sunglasses, noise-canceling headphones, um, and fidget toys um, that help officers de-escalate situations involving individuals with autism. And the reason this is so important is because individuals with autism um, have more frequent interactions with first responders. Oh, I didn't know that. And often, because of the stress of the situation, the <clears throat> overstimulation, um, their behaviors, uh, they become nonverbal. Their behaviors are actually misinterpreted by the officers as being noncompliant, as being aggressive. And officers... Um, unfortunately misinterpret their behaviors and the outcomes are, are, to be honest, less than positive. Um, The news has been filled with with many incidents recently um, where the outcomes weren't positive. Um, These bags, to me, are the potential to save lives because they give these officers and first responders Secure, school security officers, ambulance drivers, uh, police, fire, um, you know, the, the list of first responders is actually yeah. expanded for this right. purpose. It, it gives them the tools to de-escalate a situation, reduce the behaviors, and hopefully improve the outcomes. Hmm, wow. So that's, that's why I not only believe mm-hmm. in it, um, but since we got involved, um, Elevate the Spectrum has distributed over 21, um, yeah, 2,100 um, hero bags to New Mexico first responders. We were able to have events in Rio Rancho, Albuquerque, and Española. The mayors of all of those cities joined our events as well as our lieutenant governor joined one uh some of the events actually put together hero bags uh with community members and others actually presented uh these bags and um donation checks and and brought you know together many community partners together to support uh, this multi-year effort, so much so that uh, they actually have a wait list. Uh, oh my goodness! <laughs> um, and 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 are not able to meet the the demand. And they've even had demand from outside of New Mexico. Oh wow! So um, definitely uh, an important project. Now, if somebody in the community wanted to get involved in that, or even the Thanksgiving dinner, or this next. Um, Thing that you do for the community, um, how would they reach out? Well, uh, for for the hero bags, I would definitely uh, Google elevate the spectrum <laughs> dot, uh, dot org uh, hero <laughs> bags. Um, that's probably not the exact URL, but you'll be able to find it. Um, as, as or if you you know uh, Google McDonald's. Uh, Hero bags. There's many. Uh, there's uh, media has been so kind in terms of multiple articles about these efforts and the importance uh, in the lives of individuals with autism in our communities. Okay. All right. And then um, you know, you also mentioned when we talked a couple of weeks ago um, that you've also assisted first responders in another way in fundraising for canine ballistic vests. How did that come about? <laughs> well, it's actually, like many of the projects I get involved in, um, somebody reached out, you know, on a Facebook happy birthday campaign and said, hey, can you, you know, donate to help uh, APD, uh, Albuquerque Police Department canines get uh, protective vests? And I said, we can do, let's see if we can do better than that. Yeah. So, uh, we did with the help of a lot of my, um, 
my community neighbors in, in multiple locations, uh, we embarked on a project uh, to raise monies and not only provided uh, protective vests for canines in Albuquerque, we also um, provided heat alarm systems, uh, insurance, training supplies, Wow, and um, and additionally, we were able to provide uh, the monies we had raised. Actually, provided the surgery for one of the canine officers that ultimately allowed it to get back on the force and back to duty. Wow, um, and uh, through all those events, we were actually able to bring community family members together with the canine officers and their and their human po- art officer partners um, with a lot of. Uh, fun activities that were family friendly and and a lot of fun, but also educational in terms of helping uh, community members realize all the important things that our canine officers are, are doing in our communities, which is actually pretty amazing. Wow. A one woman force. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and actually, we not only served Albuquerque, but we served Rio Rancho. Albuquerque, yeah. Santa Fe, and um, Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office. Wow. With amazing. all of those supplies. I, so, as a dog lover, I love that. <laughs> well, you would have loved some of our events. We actually had some of the canine puppies that were in training um, and and needed to be socialized. Uh, and, and how exciting it was a couple of years later, uh, not under the circumstances in that my restaurant had received a bomb threat, Mm-hmm. But it was so exciting to see that one of the little puppies at our social events had actually become a Rio Rancho uh, bomb sniffing dog and was at my restaurant. <laughs> so we had a unique reunion. <laughs> oh, wow. A little silver lining in the panic. Oh, oh it was exciting. <laughs> well, and, and that officer is actually named after my son. Oh, my goodness. So, so it was especially <laughs> special. Wow. Wow. Your stories are just amazing. Um, and then one of the things that you mentioned when we talked before was the idea of, you know, it's, it's not a business, it's a McFamily to you. And, and that includes employees and the guests. So can you delve into what that is to you? Sure. Well, first of all, um, my, my father was the one who began, you know, many years ago saying, I have 13 wives and husbands, <laughs> <laughs> referring to the general managers and supervisors. Well, I added on to that by saying, and now I have 576 children, <laughs> regardless of their age, because my employees actually range from 15 to one that's almost 80. Oh, my goodness. Um, because of that, we have individuals that come together from all different ages generations, cultures. In fact, I actually have several families that are multi-generational. I have four generations of one family working for me. Oh my goodness. Um, and, And that's really exciting. But as a result of all these people coming together and working together, sometimes probably seeing each other more than their own families, we become very protective of each other. And so you see a lot of the Uh, older, more senior generations uh, becoming mentors and teachers. Because let's be honest, sometimes as an employer, we actually have to teach life skills before we teach the, uh, you know, McDonald's work, employment, soft skills. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, families at home are, are very different or in some cases non-existent or even negative. So we become very protective. And I've often said my job uh, for our organization is to work for every one of my employees to make sure that they have the tools and resources and support to be successful. Now, what support and, and, and what tools, you know, employee A needs may be completely different than what employee B needs, but I have to work mm-hmm. for each and every one of them to to make sure that they can be successful because At the end of the day, that's how the entire team can be successful. And so we, uh, that's why I think of them as part of my Mm McFamily. With our customers, there's many guests that come in several times a day Mm -hmm. to interact with the employees, 
with myself, with their neighbors for coffee or lunch. Right. Uh, so much so that when one of them is missing, we really feel it and, and um, you know, begin asking questions. I've, mm-hmm. I've actually, quote unquote, threatened a few <laughs> uh, of our employee, uh, of our guests that um, if, if they don't let us know they're not coming, we're sending the, <laughs> the Calvary after them because, you know, we know they're senior, yeah. have health problems and, and are by themselves. Um, and, and so, um, like I said, over time, because I've had such a history with, with many generations of our community men- members, many generations of our employees, um, I try to give my number to as many of them as I can. So I've received phone calls at 2 a.m. in the morning from a 16-year-old that was thrown out by an oh. alcoholic parent. Um, Heartbreaking. Yeah, with no shoes, no clothes, and no place to stay. And we were able to use our community connections to to keep them safe and, you know, and and help them get back to work the next day where they could be surrounded by their Mm family. And and um, so that's kind of how it it evolved. And, And to this day. They all know <laughs> whether they're younger or older than me, they're, they're mine. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all part of the same Mick family. That sounds like an amazing environment to work in. <laughs> I love it. I, I work seven days a week, uh, actually, in, in one to three restaurants a, a day. And it's funny because it, without fail, every time I go into a restaurant, how come you don't see us as much? <laughs> <laughs> And it was, well, if I could clone myself eight different ways, right? I'm mm-hmm. there. Okay. And then, um, you know, there's one other thing um, you kind of reached out to me this morning that you wanted to touch on was your D.A.R.E. program that you had. So what does that entail? So a couple of years back, another one of those innovative partnerships, um, we decided to put on a D.A.R.E. summer camp. We brought together... Um, first of its kind, uh, brought officer, DARE officers from multiple uh, police departments to be able to deliver the DARE curriculum. And then we brought children from nearby community centers to come to the local restaurants, my restaurants, Mm -hmm. and get uh, a free Happy Meal while they were also receiving the D.A.R.E. curriculum. Oh, my goodness. And it was such a a, a first-of-its-kind program that the actual National D.A.R.E. leadership came and joined us for the graduation uh, to support um, this effort. And it, it was a lot of fun. Um, we, the children got a chance to meet the officers over an entire, mm-hmm. uh, once a week, uh, outing, um, across the entire summer. Oh, wow. So, um, it, it was fantastic. And of course we had canines <laughs> at all the events. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I know going back to when I was in there, it would be nice to have some of those French fries while I was doing that. <laughs> Ex- exactly. Right. <laughs> what better way to learn? <laughs> Um, so anyway, that's kind of all I had on my list of questions. Is there anything else that you want to go over that we haven't touched on yet? I think I I do want to make one point and that's, you know, I was really, I'm really honored to actually be here with you. Um, and a couple of years back in 2019, I also uh, received Albuquerque firsts, um, woman of influence award, um, and McDonald's uh, actually profiled me in their first global uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, report. Uh, I was a, uh, among only three operators worldwide recognized oh, wow. in, in this first report. That's amazing. During that time, I've never seen myself as a community leader. And, and what I've seen myself is as a helpful neighbor doing what I can uh, when I can, uh, with what I can. And, and so what I get really excited about is being able to bring these innovative partnerships of community members and community partners together uh, to make amazing things happen. Because let's face it, my belief is that each and every one of us actually can do something to contribute uh, to the causes that we care about, whether it's donating our time, our talents, 
um, even our treasures. Mm -hmm. My own son, who's disabled, actually volunteers uh, weekly. Mm -hmm. That being said, I think we're all community leaders when we choose a cause and decide to do something. Right. And by doing something, I think that collectively we can move mountains and, and improve our little corner <laughs> of the world, right? Yeah. And, and I think that's really kind of what's been the heart of what's not only driving me, but um, I think, you know, I hope that my efforts also serve to continue to inspire others to, to you know, don't stand back. Um, there's a lot of things we all want to improve on. Mm -hmm. Get involved. Okay, great. And is there a way um, people can follow your organization on like social media or anything like that to find out what you're currently working on with some of these campaigns that give back to the community? Um, we'll often promote them either in the restaurants. Uh, we have an Insta a McDonald's Instagram page and we're active on our Facebook pages. Okay. Um, uh, some ahead of the events, after <laughs> the events, like I said, uh, the media has been really incredible. Like yourself, Rio Rancho, <laughs> the observer has been incredibly uh, kind in, in, in covering many of our uh, educational and community events um, so you know and actually you'll find me in each of our eight restaurants <laughs> so hopefully you know if if you see me please say hi and you never know what our next project might might be okay well great great stuff and and I know you felt like a little bit like you didn't belong here but let me tell you, you were at the top of everybody's list when we started talking about this podcast series. You got to get Clummy on. You got to get Clummy on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so. you're, you're incredibly kind. Um, you know, it, it hasn't been my effort alone. I have amazing employees that, that carry off each of these events. I have wonderful community partners that when I, you know, say, Hey, you know, we've got this great idea. <laughs> they say I'm in. And most importantly, it's the community of all our neighbors and McFamily that come and support these events and, and make it possible for all of these things to happen. Okay. Well, amazing, amazing stuff. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us and taking the time out of your day to do this with us. Well, I want to know when we're going to in interview you <laughs> as a leading lady. <laughs> Seriously, as Rio Rancho's own editor in chief, I'm in for that one. <laughs> I hope to see it soon. Oh. But thank you so much yeah. for having me. No, it's been fun um, finally getting to meet you after hearing your name so many times and, and having you on and talking with you. It's been a pleasure. Oh. And. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for watching and listening and have a great day. Thanks. Thank you for joining us for Leading Ladies of Rio Rancho from the Rio Rancho Observer. We hope you join us for future episodes. And if you or someone you know would like to be a guest, let us know by emailing editor at rrobserver.com. Again, I'm Tracy Goldeisen, editor of the Rio Rancho Observer. We appreciate you watching and listening. Have a great day.